Hey, Erica, welcome to Broadband. Hi, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Super excited to talk with you about your business, it me? Clicks Photo. Let's start with it. What is your business? My business is It Clicks Photo. Um, I am a commercial lifestyle and wedding photographer. Excellent. And how long have you been doing your work? Um, really? I've been doing it forever, but uh, professionally I've been doing it for eight years. Um, I was the kid that stole my parents' camera all the time from the age of I don't know, two on. So I've always had a camera in my hand, but uh, I actually went to school and got my degree in photography and graduated in 2013 with my degree, Bachelor's of Arts of Photography. So I've been doing it for a while. What about photography fascinates you? Um, really, it's like that freezing of a moment, but also just a point of view. So um, a lot of times I see people just like discredit themselves, just the, their imagery or whatever's going on in their life. And it's something like, say you have a house and you're in the kitchen and you look in the corner and you love this house, but then like there's a little bit of cracking going on in the corner, but you're the only one that notices that little bit of cracking happening, right? Someone walks in and goes, oh my gosh, this house is beautiful. The kitchen's great. It has all this crown molding and everything else. And you're like, yeah, but this sucks and this is terrible and this is awful. It's just to bring back with photography, like an old house. If you step back and look at it, there's all of this beauty about you. And with photography, you can show that. Oh. So I always just love being able to help people see, this is how beautiful you really are. As much as you have insecurities, everyone does, especially with online and Instagram, and Facebook, you're constantly comparing yourself to other people and really forget and lose yourself of this is what makes me, me. Yeah. So, and the beauty and the unique yeah. beauty is an individual. Yeah. I love that answer. So I think you sort of answered this question, but I'm going to ask it. Sure. Why did you pick this trade as a career? Yeah. So a little bit different, kind of the same as well. Um, back in my, like before I went to school, before I went for college, I had a little bit of a day vision of me sitting there in front of this giant big window, it's a circle window, and I have this marker and a contact sheet of all of the film strips I had, and I was circling them of the ones I wanted to process, and that was just a daydream I had, and I was like, whoa, where did that come from? That's so cool. So then I also um, drew inspiration from a kid, 13 Going on 30, that movie, oh, where sorry. the best friend, he's a photographer, and he decides, let's change the magazine. Well, Jennifer Gardner decides, let's change the magazine. So yeah. we're looking up to our big sisters and neighbors and stuff like that. And I absolutely adored that. So flash forward. Um, in my 20s, one of my best friends, he actually took his own life and he thought that he was just not important. Mm -hmm. And that was where I was like, this is a mission for sure to show people their importance just through even imagery. It seems silly because it's only one little thing, but just having even that means a lot. I don't think that's silly at all. I mean, I've seen your work and when folks check the show notes for the link to your site and all your social, they're going to see your work. And Full disclosure, you did my professional photography headshots, and I can speak from experience, it's not just photography. Your connection to the person and how you're capturing that beauty is very apparent. So I don't think it's silly at all. Thank you. I think that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So how would you express to a potential client the top three reasons they should hire you for photography? Okay, so let's see here. Top three. Um, as a business owner myself, I understand that the reason you're doing your work or your job is for a specific reason. And those reasons matter to me. So when I come in and start doing photography and doing photo work and really um, putting together a shoot, I take in consideration your own business and it's all about you and how I can help you. Um, so really I kind of leave myself out of it, except for obviously the technicals of how to do a camera, right? Um, so I love always bringing in the owner's own um, story and journey 
that really matters to me. I love collaborating. Um, so if you have an idea, you're more than welcome to bring it on in and then we'll work with that. And then also I understand budgets. Some people don't have crazy giant budgets, which is perfectly fine. And that is perfectly normal. So I love working with people with budgets as well, just to make sure that we can keep them on track and they can still grow their business. I love that. Thanks. That's great. So <laughs> if you could go back to that younger self, yeah. what kind of advice would you give yourself about pursuing this craft and art of photography as a business? Um, I would say it's not always going to be easy and you're going to have bad days, but that's just part of life. But with the tough and hard days, there's some really awesome and fun days too. So don't let that stop you. Just keep pushing forward. Don't let anyone else's opinion of what you're doing stop you. Just keep going for it. Right on sister. Now Thanks. we're going to jump five years in the future. What do you think your future self's going to say to you? Um, Keep creating art for yourself. I think that, yeah. So that's an interesting question. So you are doing specific kinds of photography. Yeah. But let's just go a little bit into art photography, the art of photography. I mean, do you have any aspirations to create more of that in the world? A little bit. And it would be more of like an editorial stylized photo kind of thing for myself. I love that work. I love just creating different details and timelines and, oh, this idea sounds great. I should do this. Those things really get me pumped. And even if I'm not making them for anyone, I should still be making it for myself. That is the truth. We, yeah. we, we are all creative beings and it's, it's, um, it's sad. And I understand there's COVID, there's life, there's this, there's that, that really distract us from putting some light on our creative selves. And um, sometimes it takes a little bit more intention than normal, but it's really important to honor our creative selves. So who influenced you professionally? Professionally, got a bunch of inspiration from different paths that I've crossed. Um, but I would say Jeremiah Campbell. He was my boss at Brickworks when I was his office manager. And that guy has high energy. He's got a high vibe. Uh, he was running three businesses when I joined. He's like added on a fourth one when I was still working in the office. And the reason he brought me on was so he could bring on more projects like nonstop go getter. That inspired me big time. Right on. Do you keep in touch with him? Yeah, I did. Yeah. 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 So it, it sounds like he was sort of a mentor for you. A little bit. Little yeah. Bit. We still keep in touch and I'll still do photos for him and stuff like that, which is That's great. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. And so you do photos here in the Rhode Island area, but you also do photos somewhere else. Yes. In Michigan. In Michigan, <laughs> where you're from, right? Yeah. So you're pretty active. How frequently do you go back and forth? Um, I would say... When it's wedding season, a lot more often, that's for sure. Just finishing up the weddings in Michigan. But um, right now, it's every other month or every month, we'll be back for a week or two. So we have a lot of split time. So I'm curious, how is it that you keep doing your business development in a state you don't live in anymore? How does that work? A lot of times, it's the people I've already have relationships with. Um, like, for example, this one family, I did their uh, wedding photos, their maternity photos, their three months, six month newborn, mm -hmm. you know, photos of that. And whenever I'm in town, they're like, please let us know when you're here because we have such a strong relationship. They're like, we don't want to go to any other photographer. We need to have you here. So when Aww. you're here, we'll get photos, which is great. Oh, so. so they're referring. So your clients are very happy with the work and yeah. referring. Okay, cool. So. You're very high energy, clearly, Erica. Um, and that's one of the things I really admire about you. How do you maintain that momentum? How do you keep a healthy pace as a business owner? Yeah, so it's gonna sound a little reverse, but separating work from personal life. That's how I keep my momentum. Um, a lot of times, you know, especially if you are a business owner, you're constantly checking your emails and doing your things and all of that good jazz but eventually you get burned out. So if there is a separation, say if I'm hanging out with friends and family and inspiration comes to my head for a future shoot, 
I'll jot it down real quick and then put it away just so I have it on paper, but I'm not constantly thinking about it while I'm off the clock, essentially off the clock. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I've had conversations with different folks um, through this uh, podcast process, but also through my podcast listening and reading and so forth. And I have to say, one of the things that hasn't inspired me is hearing some stories about, oh, I remember the early days of my business. And for many years where I'd have to work 80, 90 hours a week, um, and I couldn't even afford a latte. And, you know, uh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> so it's interesting as I'm talking, meeting and talking to other women business owners, I'm not hearing that from those people. So um, that's good. That's very healthy, I think. Very, sure. thank you. very healthy. So what advice would you share with someone who um, expressed to you, you know what, I'm, I'm interested in becoming a business owner or I'm starting my own business. What kind of advice would you share with them? I would say, um, write down all your ideas, go for it. Just really figure out exactly what you want to do and how it speaks to you on a deeper level, because you can always do something for a while, but if you don't have that deeper connection to why you do what you do, then it's going to burn out eventually, but don't be afraid to get out there and achieve something. You can absolutely do it. And if it's not the right path right away, it'll change and you'll see it's changing. And that's okay. If it changes, that's yeah. not a big deal. No one's ever said that has to be your one path, but um, don't be discouraged. It's not going to happen overnight. Just keep going. So let me ask you this. If the scales one to 10, one, you're scaredy cat, 10, you're the ultimate risk-taking thrill, thrill seeker. Where are you on that continuum? Honestly, I'm probably at like a six. I'm in the middle. I was really, I built up to that six. I was like probably at a two for a really long time. And then eventually I was like, okay, baby steps. Just go for it, you know? Yeah. Eventually made it up. So I'm at a six. Hopefully one day I'll be at a 10. We'll see. Right on. I love that. I, you know, I have taken a lot of risks, but it wasn't like, oh, I'm such a risk taker. But um, the more I take chances and experiment, the reward totally outweighs the pain of those yes. experiences. So I, okay, I'm not going to be like a super extreme sports person ever. <laughs> okay. Um, but to, to play around with the daydreaming, because that's your creative self, right? Your muse talking with you and saying, you know, oh, is there any way after this COVID thing's done to go live and work while I live in Paris? You know, and okay. right, I don't speak French. Why well, I know enough to get me in trouble? <laughs> a little bit. But, um, but, you know, when you have to take a chance, because it never would occur to me 10 years ago to even think about that as an opportunity. But when you do the baby steps, as you suggested, which I'm a big fan of baby steps, you start building your confidence and um, take on bigger challenges. So what would you say surprised you the most about being a business owner? I think really the actual freedom you do have is one of them. But the second one is um, a lot of advice came in from like people who don't own businesses, you know, like, oh, you know, you should do this. And it's like, obviously they're not undermining me. They're just trying to be kind and yeah. helpful. Um, a lot of times I know I, there's been times where it has cut me down and I'm like, what the heck, why are they trying to build, you know, whatever. But um, it's, that was like one of the surprising things. It's like, okay, I'm running my own business because I wanted to do my own thing kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, but the freedom of it, there's a lot of freedom when you do own your own business, but there's also a lot of responsibility too. Yeah. And that, you know, as I dig further, cause I'm only officially a one year old business, Yay. but thank you. Um, but I have learned that you have, there are approaches and skills and tools to help you because you can't, in my opinion, just be all willy nilly because yep. you don't have the structure of a nine to five job to help contain that. Mm -hmm. So, um, but if you build the habits, and invest in those habits. Um, it just makes your life so much more enjoyable as a business owner, because there is a lot of stress and anxiety and, you know, things you don't really have to navigate in conventional, traditional employment. But I agree, um, the flexibility 
to be like, you know what, I'm not going to work Thursday, but take my kid to the beach. Yep. You know, um, it's, it's, it's really liberating to have that freedom. So how would you describe your entrepreneurial spirit? Um, definitely free flowing. It's definitely understanding, but I'm firm on what I can and cannot do. Um, I've been reading the book Essentialism. Um, that is by Greg McCowan. McEwen? I'm really terrible with names, but it's, I'll, I'll send you it. I'll send you it. Okay. Um, but it talks about how stretching yourself so thin, if you're all going in different directions, you can't really get that far because you're just spread out. I got to read that book. Yeah. That one path will get you way further, you know? So um, that has been one of the things that I've been trying to do more and getting more of into the spirit of things is just really focusing on the things that I want to do, not versus everything in the entire world. And that is such a fascinating topic. And at some point I want to dig more deeply with everyone I talk to about it, because if your um, foundation is built on creativity, right? And I don't know about you, but I don't think it's a stretch to say this, that that creativity that flows, it comes in from all different places. That's why it exists, right? So I struggle and I'm totally putting that book on my list because I struggle because I literally will come up with five new ideas a week. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned to do, because I journal every day, that's a practice. It'll yeah. pop in my head. That's when the portal opens when I'm journaling and I have another book specifically. Oh, that's a great idea. And I, that way, <laughs> and then now I have like six books, you know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, Denise. All right. Oh my God. I'm going to have to read that guy's book. So I totally hear <laughs> that. Um, how much time do you devote to your own uh, professional development and training as a photographer or, or a business owner? I guess I should. Yeah. Um, I guess, well, every night I do read for like 20 minutes or so. And that's just on more personal development, but that still goes hand in hand with professional because if you're personally growing, so is your business. Agreed. Um, so I'd say that, and then I spend probably two hours um, just taking online classes and stuff like that. And then I'll spend another like two hours just manifesting and envisioning the future. A is that bit. a week or a month? Yeah, a week, a week. So it's probably like five hours a week that I'm oh, like- Oh girl, you're the second person who's told me this. I have got to get with that program. <laughs> Just a little bit of reading, but a lot of the like manifesting too is when I'm doing like driving or doing something, cooking. Yeah. Myself, you know? All right. Okay. I kind of do some of that, but yeah. I need to get more intentional. You're inspiring me. <laughs> so you already suggested that one book, but do you have any other resources, podcasts, books, blogs, online learning, things of that nature that um, you found super helpful to bring you to this point in your career as an, a business owner? For sure. Um, let's see here. So like online stuff, B-School by Marie Forleo. We talked about that a little bit. It's a really great online course of really focusing in on your business. Um, the Essentialism by Greg McGowan. Um, and then Destined to Be podcast. That's actually by my boss from Brickworks, Jeremiah oh, Campbell. Okay. He does a podcast, Project Me with Tiffany. That's also another podcast. She talks to multimillionaires and interviews them which is really great. And just like how they became successful. Um, You're welcome podcast. That is by Hillary Radford. I think I'll have to check. Her oh, no worries. I'll Google okay. it. I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> but then like other things of like just personal development stuff, anything that Gabby Birdstein writes is golden. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm She's familiar with her as well. I'm familiar with her. Okay, cool. So as I mentioned, um, I'll get all those links. Um, yes. in the show notes. So if you missed any of that, it'll be right there for you. Okay. So I have a final question with five questions in it. Okay. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. What is your favorite flower? Shasta daisy. And what is that? Da what kind of daisy is that? They're like just yellow metals, white leaves, they're just, or white petals, just the normal, like plain old daisy. Okay. Just they are so cute, aren't they? Okay. Coffee or tea? Both, but if I had to pick, coffee. Okay. Tahiti or Paris? Tahiti, hands down. Oh my gosh. Okay, you're the first person who's gone tropical. Okay. Really? Um, are you an intention setter or a goal getter? 
a intention setter. So am I. That's why we're yeah. friends. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I listen to this um, meditation periodically about intention setting and the speaker talks to, you know, goals are outcome based and there's so many things that can impact it that you can't control. Whereas intentions is all internal. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah, I totally love that. Um, so do you have a favorite quote that you can share with us? I've got a couple, but I have limited it down to two. Okay. Uh, simple one, oldie, but a, a very oldie actually, but a goodie treat others the way you want to be treated. That's my fave. And then a close second would be if there's a will, there's a way. I love it. Both of them. Good. Erica, this has been such a treat to spend some time with you and get your insights as a businesswoman. I um, really admire your energy and your, your work as a photographer. So thank you so much. This has been fun. Thank you, thank you Denise. This has been the best podcast ever. Little interview awesomeness. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you.